Raise your hand if you are just getting the hang of Notion and you're ready to level up your workspace. Today, I'm sharing 11 features, tips, tricks, hacks, whatever you want to call it that you may not know existed inside Notion. In fact, one of these features I discovered by accident myself. If you're into Notion and want to see more of it, or you just like planning productivity and personal growth topics, make sure you subscribe because those are the kind of things that we like to talk about around here. All right, let's get into it and we're going to go kind of fast. So buckle your seatbelts. The first feature is tabs, kind of like browser tabs. If you find yourself clicking around on a lot of different pages and you wish you could just access two to three pages really easily, you can click the plus sign on the top of your Notion workspace to add another tab. Super easy, super effective. The second one also has to deal with tabs, but these are tabs in your actual database. So normally you can add a new tab to your database that is just a different view of the information that you already have there. But hang on because you can actually add a tab or different view of a whole nother database, which means you can have multiple databases in one section that you can just toggle through. This is especially useful if you plan your week in Notion and you have to access a lot of different databases to be able to make decisions on what you're gonna do this week. For instance, on my weekly planning page, I have a database where I am showing all tasks and I'm also showing tasks that are up next. Those are both from the same database. But in the other two tabs, I also have a look at my weekly themes for the week so I know exactly what I need to work on for that week. That's a whole nother database. And then I'm also referencing my content calendar database to see what content I need to make for Instagram, YouTube, email, etc. Number three, if you wish that you could automate an icon to pop up on a database page automatically, you can do it through a template. All you have to do is click the drop down arrow next to the new button and you can add a new template to your database. Put in all the properties that you want to come up automatically, but make sure you add the icon that you want to also come up automatically every time you add a new page to that database. Like for instance, a task database. I have this black check mark that I want to come up every single time I add a task. Then to guarantee that it comes up automatically, you're gonna click the three dots next to that template template and make it say default. That way, every time you add a new page, the icon that you want populates right away. Number four also has to do with database pages, and that is to open up the database page in anything other than side peek. I don't know if side peek annoys you as much as it does me, but you can actually change that by going into the three dots on the top right of your database, clicking layout, and then open layout in, and you can change it to open in center or open in full page. Then anytime you click a page from that database, it will open in the way that you actually want it to. Number five, create columns on Notion pages. If you wanna beautify your space and maximize your pages, you wanna use columns. And you can get columns on your page in two different ways. One, you can click on the domino icon to the left of whatever it is you wanna move into a second or third column and drag it to the right of whatever you want to be in the first column. Or you can choose a database block. You just have to do the slash command and then search for whatever number column that you want, two, three, four, five, and add that to your page. And then it will create little placeholders that you can then drag and drop the text or image or title, whatever it is that you want to put in those columns. I use columns in almost all of my pages. In my personal dashboard page, that has two different columns. And then I also have five columns that are acting like a menu on top of my content creation hub page. Here's another thing that really bothers me about databases, and that is the database database title showing every time I create a new database or link a database view into another page. But you can change that. You can hide the database title. You just have to go to the three dots on the top right hand corner of the database, click layout, and then toggle off show database title. It's as easy as that. Moving right along to number seven, I said we were gonna go pretty fast. This one is adding a image to your icon or cover photo of your page 
using a link. So if you do not want to take the time or bandwidth on your computer to be able to download and then re-upload a custom icon or a custom color photo, you can actually find the link of where that photo is hosted and then add it in the link portion for the icon section or in the cover photo section. Now the only problem with this is if for some reason the photo link gets disconnected or taken off the internet, then it will not work in your workspace. So if you're worried about that, you might as well download the image and then upload it to your workspace. But you can make it a lot faster to add these custom photos and icons by adding a link. Number eight adds a little extra aesthetic to your Kanban board database views. So this is adding a colored background to your Kanban board. So anytime you're showing a view that is grouped by status or some sort of select or multi-select tag, you can actually color the background behind those sections. All you have to do is go to the three Three dots in the upper right hand corner, choose group, and then toggle on color columns. It will automatically color the column according to the color that the tag is. So if you want something a little more minimalist or streamlined, make sure your tags are all the same color. Number nine, did you know that you do not have to pay to add someone to your Notion team? This is for small business owners who want to add a freelancer to help them out with a couple of projects, or if you want to share packing lists or travel planning pages with another family member, you can add them to your account as a guest. If you're on the Notion free plan, you can have up to 10 guests in your workspace. So what you can do is just click share at the top of the page, put in their email, it will send them a notification link to get onto Notion and see that page. Number 10, is a feature that I stumbled on by accident and I really don't know how long it's been around because I didn't find it until a couple weeks ago. And that is to change the bullet button to either an open circle or a square. It's such a little thing, but when I discovered it, I thought, oh, this is, this is really cool. All you have to do is click the domino to the left of the text that is your first text in the bulleted list. And that's where you can go down to list format and you can change it to a disc, circle, or square. But the jury's out on what the difference is between the normal default bullet and disc. If you know, let me know in the comments because they look the same to me. To be honest, I don't know how useful this feature is because it takes a lot of time to be able to change the bullet to maybe an open circle, which is what I would prefer to use. And there's currently no way to make that default in any of the settings. So hopefully Notion fixes that in the future. And the last hack, number 11, is something that Notion came out with recently and it was so needed that is freezing columns in a table view of your database. Freezing columns is something that you're used to if you've used spreadsheets before. It's an easy way if you have a lot of data to be able to see that data and see the original name that you're looking at and how it corresponds to the rest of the data. Now you can do this on tables. So you can right click on the column that you want to freeze, click freeze column, and you have access to all that data no matter how long or how many more properties you add to that table view. There are so many more cool features that I wanted to share, but I didn't want this to be a super long video, so I'm sure I will do a part two in the future, and it will probably include even more new and exciting updates from Notion because they're always making their platform better, and that's one of the reasons why I love it. If there's a feature here that I mentioned that you had no idea existed or you're excited to try out, drop a comment below and let me know what it is. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new here, and I will see you in the next one.